I want to get into like the workflow and then what's like you, when, you know, when could you send an email? It, what's appropriate? What copy is appropriate? What strategy is appropriate? At what stages, you know, like before you connect, after you connect, if, if they don't reply. So when I get, wanted to get into that because I, I do think that there is, there, there can be a place that's appropriate to talk to someone by email. Not, not always. Uh, but when you're sourcing emails, so there are, there's really going to be two, there's, there's two different ways that emails are sourced. And if anyone here is like an email pro, feel free to chime in. So number one is they're going to grab your first name, your last name, and then the company website and run it through. They're going to like ping your the MX records of, for, for that domain. So they'll use a bunch of variations. Like here you see uh, Danny on the little gift they have. It's Danny Guzman. They'll do like Daniel dot first name dot first name dot last name, first initial last name. They'll do a bunch of different variations, ping the MX records and see what comes back as a, as a possible hit. And they're going to categorize that into like verified and, and not verified. It's like a trust score. So uh, for the sake of like your email deliverability, you only want to do the ones with higher confidence because you don't want a bunch of bounces. So that's one way. And that's the way that people typically get the work emails that are not on a profile. The second way that it's sourced is by basically like if you've got someone's first name, last name, location, uh, their LinkedIn profile, a bunch of information, but then you, you kind of like have a footprint and then you can do a search a number of different places and assume that it's you based on your information about you. And if there's ever been any publicly recorded information about you, white pages, stuff on Facebook, MySpace, whatever, wherever it was, wherever that footprint's left, if it matches that information, it's going to assume it might be you. So that's usually where they're going to get your, um, your, your personal email. And possibly like with uh, the that company Krista was saying, if you are connected to someone and you have and you had your personal information on LinkedIn, that might get sold. That's just a possibility; it could get sold. So, that's kind of the the main places that it it comes from. Uh, any any questions on that before we talk about actual workflow stuff, workflow copy? Any any, any email pros that want to chime in there? Okay, cool. So let's do this. Let's talk about when you could potentially use email together with LinkedIn, just scenarios. I'm not saying this is the best. I'm just saying these are the options that you have to choose from. I've been on the receiving end of all these. So sometimes, uh, like, let's say I'm the prospector, okay? Let's say I want to talk to Mark. What you could do is you could send, you could run Mark's information because we're not connected. I don't have his email. I could do Mark, first name, last name, company website, run it through. If I find his email, I could send him an email and then I could send him an invite, right? So you could do that email, then invite or email, then in mail, whatever you want to do. Or you could send the invite to connect first and then you could just send the email, right? Or you could connect, get their actual LinkedIn profile email. And if it's there, then you could email them as well. And, or you could, so you could email their personal email or you could try to find their work email if you've got GDPR issues. Also depends on what you want to talk about. So those, those are the big workflows that I see. So email, then LinkedIn, or email kind of within that overall sequence. Sometimes it's they send the email when they're inviting or the email after they don't reply for a week or the email after they don't accept the invite for a week or two or the email right after connecting. So you could do all those things. And I, th I think that depending on what you're trying to do, sometimes they, they could all be appropriate, depending again on what you're saying, who the people are, that kind of thing. Uh, anybody else have any workflow examples for when you've either sent or been on the receiving end of LinkedIn together with email? We do a system where they connect on LinkedIn. They do a manual welcome message. Um, if they choose to disqualify someone, everything stops. Otherwise, they get an email um, to the LinkedIn email five days after after the welcome message is sent. Um, and then they get a, a LinkedIn message, then an email, and a LinkedIn message and an email, essentially five business days apart, stringing out about seven or eight steps. And we wrote some special software 
on top of a campaign tool, on top of Sales Navigator, on top of LinkedIn, kind of shell, 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 that pushes that out. So when someone responds to an email or a, or a LinkedIn message, both sending apparatus are stopped and you're notified. So then you're giving them the, the option to choose which channel they would rather communicate on. If they, uh, yes, that's true. That's true. Um, they're communicating out on both every, every five business days, every week, you could say this mm -hmm. one, this one, this one, this one, we don't know which one they like prefer. So, and mm -hmm. it's dripping content out over the, over both. Yep. Um, so I'll share some thoughts here on what we've learned over the years. And then I, I don't want to talk the whole time. I'd rather hear everybody else's share as well. So a couple thoughts here. When we've done email, we've, we've tried a bunch of different things, a bunch of different tools, a bunch of different types of copy. You know, what's the purpose of the email if they haven't started talking on LinkedIn? Is it, I mean, I don't think you should jump right into sales, but what do you say? You know, like, do you mention the fact that you just sent them a message or an invite on LinkedIn? Do you mention that as an excuse? Like, what, what, what do you say? So a couple of takeaways that we've had here are uh, you, you can do a perfect job and treat people with excellence and still you're just not going to make everyone happy. So I, I just think that if you decide to do email, you just have to accept that some people, if you're doing a, a fantastic job, some people, they just have a personal line with email and they're like, you cross that. And there's no way to really know where people are at with that. So just have that expectation. Yeah. We've had campaigns where people love it. And then every one in 10 are like, what, what are you doing? Like, never email me again. You know, it's, it's like, what do, you, what do you do? Like, you've got 10 really happy people that are like, oh my gosh, that's so fun. Like, I'd love to do that. You know, I'd love to, get, I'd love to visit. And then that one in 10 are like, eh. so you just have to, I think, be okay with you do your best, but not everyone, not 100% of people are going to be happy. So I have that expectation. Um. The oh, anybody else want to chime in there? <laughs> I've seen a few I, of those emails like you're talking about. I know yeah. what you're talking about. I see those. I I've been for me as a as a potential prospect, it really comes down to what are they, what are they saying? To, what are they saying to me? And like, what are they, what do they want from me? You know, I've gotten some really fun, clever emails from people. I know it, they came from LinkedIn. And I'm just like, I'll bite. That that's that, you know that's cool. And then some are just junk. I think it's mm -hmm. it's more what you're saying to the person and why you want to have a conversation with them. I really think that's more important than anything else. As far as the workflow, what what I think you've got two two best options. And again, please chime in. I think you've got two best options as far as the workflow. Um, one is you send the invite on LinkedIn first. And then if they don't engage, then you send an email and you can mention in the email, like, hey, I sent you an invite on LinkedIn a couple of weeks ago. I was wanting to visit about this, not a sales pitch, but just let's start a conversation and use LinkedIn as like having sent the invite first as your sort of excuse for starting a conversation by email. So that's worked all right for us. Uh, what we haven't done, but I've been on the receiving end that I actually like, it just happened the other day. Someone sent me an email at the same exact time that they sent me an invite. And the reason why that stood out to me was in my actual email inbox, I got their name twice in a row. Once was from LinkedIn and once was from them emailing me. And it, that just totally stood out to me. It's like, like, oh, I got two separate emails, but they're, they're different. And I got their name, boom, twice. The copy was mediocre, but I remember I was like, oh, that's interesting. So I, I think that could potentially be a, a way to stand out as well. Anybody else have any, uh, what, do you, what do you feel like works? What do you appreciate? Any thoughts? You want it to be held strictly to email? Uh... Let, let's more keep it on email and LinkedIn. Were you thinking text? No. Um, 
I was just going to mention that LinkedIn has a very close relationship with Twitter. And if oh, you click on one of those names, a lot of times people will have their Twitter handle as part of their um, contact information. And so you can easily message them on Twitter as well. Yeah, yeah I have done that. Have you all had any response, like positive response from that as far as a reply from people? I have. Cool. And um, sometimes people are more active on Twitter than they are on LinkedIn. Yeah, I think so, a lot of people on Twitter, I think a lot of people are more watchers. Yeah. Then so just mm -hmm. because they're, they don't have an active feed. Karen. Let's see. Oh, let's see there you go. Mm -hmm. Estrada expert. Should I message that person and ask how often he's on LinkedIn? <laughs> you know, you, you could. <laughs> so actually, maybe this is another monkey. Maybe this is another another topic for another time is incorporating that touch point as part of your greater workflow. You know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. has anybody done that? We've not done that. Nobody. I have, I have um, followed people on Twitter and then use that as a reason to connect them on LinkedIn. Yeah, the reverse. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. And then so you can say, hey, just followed you on, on Twitter. Yeah, you probably yeah, have. Especially if they've done a tweet. So I'm going to refer to that as well when, when I connect. Yeah. And sometimes people will, will have notifications from Twitter activated, but not from LinkedIn. So if you make a connection with them on Twitter, it notifies them. And then it's a quick, quick message. Hey, I'd like to connect with you on LinkedIn too. You know, so it can open up that conversation pretty quickly. Anytime you can find where they're active, whether it's on a, another social platform, email, you know, it takes 12 touches at least to move people mm -hmm. through into kind of a buying cycle. So the more ways that you can get in front of somebody, the better. Yeah. Regarding to the workflow, based on my experiences, many people from the corporate world uh, don't really share their very best email addresses on LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's why they don't really read them. So for me, it works better to reach out to them via chat on LinkedIn. Uh, of course, before you can check how often do they, they post or their activity feed, so you can figure it out how many times <laughs> do they uh, check their, their feed. And uh, if they're responsive, uh, you can, you can uh, start to build up the relationship, not to make them feel you are very uh, salesy. Uh, on the other hand, I think uh, entrepreneurs and small business owners like to, to share their, their valid email addresses here because they are mostly um, look, searching for uh, you know, connections for business purpose, while corporate people are rather a bit reluctant to accept uh, all the invitations. They like to check through the feeds of the person uh, who initiated to be connected because they are, you know, there are a lot of people who want to sell something or want to get uh, some money for ch charity purposes or things like that. So this is what I experienced. Okay, Cameron put his email publicly. We're not even first degree connections. That's a that's a that's a rare one off. There hmm. are other salespeople. Be, I was actually surprised when LinkedIn made that an option that ever you could have your email visible to everyone. I think they finally got tired of all the people putting it in a public part of their profile when at that point it was against the terms to do that. So. <clears throat> Uh, so I, I do want to point one thing out. This is more like technical when you're finding the emails because we were looking at uh, oh, it must have been in like in, in, when you're using a, a tool <coughs> to find work emails. There are guys. There are like a zillion tools. You plug in the the LinkedIn profile or whatever, and it says here's the email. 
but there's the way that it works. You almost, my recommendation is if you're, if you're wanting to do email, you're wanting to find work emails that are not on a, that are not on the pro, public profile. There's one technical difference in a tool that in my mind makes it or breaks it. And that is, do they grab the, do they follow through and grab the domain of the company? Because a, a lot, I mean, the majority of, of email finding tools that you use, they'll grab the, the first name, the last name, the company name, and then that's it. And so what they do is if that, those are the only data points, what they'll do is they'll, they'll do like a, a name lookup for Blue Fire leads and then they'll guess the domain, but it's not for sure the domain. Does that make sense? So mm. if, if there's a, a, if you're dealing with like Pepsi's Pepsi, there's not many Pepsi's out there, you know, you know McDonald's is McDonald's. But if you're dealing with a smaller sized company and there are a lot of variations that are similar, the miss rate is pretty high. So if you're, if you're doing that, make sure that you're getting the website from the company page so that you're actually talking to the right person at the right company. That's uh, mo anyways, most, most email finding services, they don't do that. Yes, but I, but, I but I think, sorry to interrupt you, sometimes mm -hmm. just uh, figuring out the email address and let's say attack people, it's much more uh, approachable when you reach out someone via a message by initiating um, your purpose. And if the person is not responsible for the issue, it happened to me many times. And the conversation is really nice, not in a pushy kind of salesy uh, targeting. Uh, they will they will connect to the right person, and and you can refer uh, the the first person who recommended the second person to get in touch with. It's it, I think it's a sensitive thing, and it, it many times happened uh, for me, uh, like such comp big companies like like Pepsi you mentioned, mm -hmm. because people want to check your profile, who you are before they start the conversation with you. And if you are convincing enough, they will tell the name whom you should reach out to and you can refer to the first person, as I mentioned. So yeah, email referrals actually is, is another thing to bring up too. So when, when we're dealing with re replies on LinkedIn, uh, one of the common things we get is referral. So sometimes the person says, you know, this is not my wheelhouse. You need to go talk to, you know, you need to go yeah, talk to Karen, to Karen. So yeah. sometimes, sometimes they'll like, you don't want to pressure them into saying like, well, give me their email so that yeah. you know, they're just yeah, like, oh, yeah. what, what if, I don't know if you're trustworthy enough to give Karen's email. So sometimes you just got to find that person. And then what we do is send an in-mail, but sometimes the person sending the referral, uh, this probably happens once a week per client, per person that we're working with. Or they'll say, you know, this is not my responsibility. This is Karen's responsibility. Please email her. And I, I think that that's going to be more common when you're dealing with like mid-level management and you're talking about them getting their job done. And then it's appropriate. It's like, yes, I, I handle vendor application. Why wouldn't you email me about that? You know, it's just totally appropriate. So then uh, you get a referral with Karen's email. We have a, like a, an email sequence built into CRM for referrals, where it's like, you know, hi, Karen, uh, I talked to Mark yesterday. He gave me your email, uh, said that you'd be the person to talk to about vendor application. Is that, is that correct? And then you start a conversation. So that, that's definitely an email workflow. It's a lot more organic than kind of mm -hmm. emailing people, but that totally is something I think we should be doing. What do you guys, how do you feel about the image customization where they grab, someone grabs your headshot from LinkedIn and like layers it over something and sends it to you by email? Have you ever gotten one of those? Or video? Have you ever received one of those? No. No? Mm -hmm. Has anybody received one of those? No? Interesting. Can you so show us what example? you mean? Because I'm not, yeah, I'm not exactly sure what it is that you mean. 
Um, I I don't have sorry I don't have time to dig through my email, but it's like though, it's like the it's like what I was talking about earlier with um, Lemlist actually here. Let's just do this. They might have an example. So you can grab someone's. So this is like basically back, a back. This is the like the canvas template. So you've got this is like the background, and then you can grab their headshot and then put in their name or whatever, and then do like a like a GIF or a video or a picture, and send it to someone to get their attention. Have, have no one has received one of those, huh? Oh. So I've re I've received a couple, and because I've messed with it, I'm just like, oh, that's clever. I know what you're doing. Um, we've used it for clients kind of a mixed bag um if you want to go that route this is what what we've learned you've you've got to manually review every single email because sometimes people have like their kids in the picture like get cameron guy here if if we send a, an email with image customization and we pull his profile he's like whoa how do you get my kids picture and what are you doing so you've got to Look for that kind of thing. If someone just looks awful, <laughs> their headshot is awful. You just you could shoot yourself in the foot because they're like, "That's an awful picture of me. I hate you." No. Also. What if their picture is of a foot or Yoda? Yeah. Yoda, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Have not encountered that. So Which lo I've logos. Seen, I've seen what? some crazy profile photos. There's a uh, logos come up probably more than anything as, if it's not actually yeah. them. Yeah. But yeah, so the we've got one client that we're doing this for, and it's it's absolutely brought in money for them, for sure, for sure. And so it, but it depends on the offer. So like in this use case, we the client that we're working with they have a really cool local location. And they have, we have like a GIF of the person there. And it's just like a 20 minute drive away. And so it's really like, hey, we're here local. You want to come by sometime? Happy to have you out. So, and that's gotten, but again, it's all about the copy and the audience. So it's local and it's relational. Uh, definitely has, definitely has made the money. Uh, and a lot of people will, will say in that, in that situation, because again, it's more conversational. It's more relational. It's not a sales pitch. It's, it's come over. Uh, people are like, this is really cool. Or thanks for emailing me. I'm never on LinkedIn. And then there's the one off where it's like, don't email me. But, and we're, we're sending those after they don't engage on LinkedIn. So we'll wait. Like mm -hmm. they, if they don't accept the invite for two weeks, then we'll send an email. But it's, it's like, hey, sent you a message on LinkedIn. Maybe you didn't get it. I know a lot of people aren't on there very often. Just wanted you to know we're down the road. If you want to come by about X, Y, and Z, it's, it's related to their, to their role at their company, why they've come by. And so we've had pretty good results with that, but we're not trying to straight up like jump right into a sales conversation. It's more, more conversational. Anybody, anybody have any experience in, in doing stuff with email people? This is how we we typically wait. We, we typically send the email the invite first, and then email them if they don't engage on LinkedIn, giving them the the more distant relational LinkedIn handshake opportunity first, and then go to email. But keep it we keep it conversational. Anybody have any experience or you want to share, Mike or anybody else? No. We're doing, like I said, that series that, that kicks off X amount of days. It's settable. We can set it to whatever we want per customer, I mean, per, per message. But it, uh, it, it alternates back, back and forth between the two. Um, I know other places that literally take, uh, take the email off and they, they talk but like they do this, but they're really doing independent campaigns. And if, if someone responds on one, they're still sending on the other. It's just popping them on into a MailChimp something, it seems mm -hmm. like. I think also if you are one thing we've thought through to keeping in mind with like GDPR and everything, uh, you, you may, I'm not sure what the GDPR rules are with, in your, with them, what I'm about to say, but if you are going to send someone an email to their work email, 
and they have not replied on LinkedIn, be mindful of GDPR. But what we prefer to do is send it from the CRM. Again, keep it conversational. Mention what you said on LinkedIn. But we, we do it from the CRM because I don't want an unsubscribe link in an email that I want to feel like is like I'm sending it to them to start a conversation. So whatever you're using, if you're required to do an unsubscribe link, it people are like, oh, this is a mailing list. You're not actually emailing me. You know, you're not emailing me, you know. So I'd, I'd say if you if you can do that without an unsubscribe. I think are there any that tools does. that people are using for the email side of it where you're not putting them on an email list where it's doing more of a one-to-one or are you actually going into the email address or the email box to do that? What are there tools to make it look like a personalized email that someone else can do without being in your inbox? I, I don't know what else about our back end, but we're using um, uh, an application password with, with Gmail and Outlook. If that helps, um, so you're doing it straight out of G- out of their Gmail account, then? I believe so, but I don't handle that part here. My partner Jason does, but we have to get Crystal, an application the, password for everybody, so that that's a hint. Yep. Crystal, the mm-hmm. the least technical route and the easiest route is to have a CRM that syncs with your email, and then do an import and have like a, a template. I think that's the easiest route there. And so you have, if you you have someone else doing it, they're accessing the CRM, which has your email connected to it, and you're sending through the CRM. Is that exactly? Yep. Okay. Exactly. Crystal, do you, yes, you want to sell direct? Do you want to send directly through? Are you talking about you personally sending? Directly no, no, I'm not talking email? about just oh. just. I like to just figure out how things go. I have a client, a, a client who is thinking about doing something with email. So just trying to figure out what are the methods, the processes or tools that people are using to make it as easy as possible. Yeah, because we've yeah. used different tools like GMAS and things to send it directly through the email. So it goes mm-hmm. it's a higher rate of uh, directly in the, you know, in the inbox yeah. and doesn't go to the other tabs, things like that. Because our approach is different because you guys are doing it on a mass scale. We're, we do it in a little micro scale in the sense that we, the clients I've been working with now, go to events, get business cards, connect on LinkedIn, and then send emails out because they've already met them. It's a warm, mm-hmm. it's a more of a warm email. So the rate is much higher in connecting. Yeah. I like it. I like it. Yeah. You know what we did, or Michael? It's just time consuming. You know, it's, you have to have some somebody in that market or wherever you're at. But it work. You know, it does work pretty well. It's you're using the you're using a previous engagement as your reason for talking. And I think that is really helpful, which is why we send the invite on LinkedIn first, because then you have a previous engagement to reference in the email. And what we're doing on top of that is, since we're a business calendar and we have local business events you've met someone in a business event. So the content you send them is an upcoming event that they may be interested in. So they're even more likely to engage with you because they are, they've already been to an event. So you know they're a person that likes to go to events or, you know. You know, we ran a, a, an A-B test. She said this earlier. We ran an A-B test when we first started getting into this because I was like, should we only send to work emails that we can find? Because that's going to be a smaller list than emails we get with first degree connections, right? Because if your first degree connection can be 90, 95% of the time you have their email, times it's personal. Should we do that or should we do verified work emails? So we did a split test and I don't know if this is still true, but when we did this probably two years ago now, the, the bounce rate for sending it to the, emails that were on the LinkedIn profile was higher than the verified work emails. I was shocked. I think the bounce rate on the LinkedIn profile emails was like between 10 and 15% and sending to the verified email work emails was like three to 5% somewhere in there. I was, I was shocked at that. So that was another big reason why we decided to just send to work emails. Something about. Okay, we're past the hour. Good talk today. Is anybody, uh, you know what we should do? 
I'll put some of the tools that we've messed with to do email in the that sheet. So let me do this. If you do not have this sheet, which we've gone over in the past, I'm going to drop it in the chat. So if you want to get into email, I'll put a couple of email resources in there. So that's kind of just, again, if you've never jumped on that sheet, it's just a big, huge, and not super huge. It's just a big list of stuff that people have used. We don't personally endorse everything that's on there. Just if you want to check it out, it's there to check out. Cool. Anybody else? Anything else on email? No. All right, cool. Well, I'll throw some of those resources on there. Um, guess we'll catch you all next week. All right. Thanks. Thanks. Have a good one. Good to see you, everybody. Bye. Yes. We'll see you next Bye. week.